Alrighty, what's up guys? Single player Nacho here. Break out those viruses and get your boulder fists ready. These are 10 powerful BOWs in Resident Evil. Now yes, powerful can mean strong and thick and ginormous, but this list also breaks down very, very difficult to deal with monsters. Resident Evil is infamously known for its difficult camera angles and piss you off control scheme. So to make things interesting, I added a few BOWs that are either one hit kills or are just hard to fucking find. So without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have the infected bat, AKA flying dickhead. This thing is a travesty to deal with. Now the infected bat is actually a boss fight in Resident Evil Zero's church level. You know, the wonder of flight, the ability to fly and span your wings, it's breathtaking. But then you have this bundle of bullshit. The bat will fly off screen. You don't know where you're aiming at or shooting. The rifle proves useless. And on top of all of that, the infected bat sends its little minions to make things even more annoying. Now, I don't know if this is actually more of a problem with Resident Evil Zero's mechanics. I mean, it was one of the last tank control games ever. And even then, lore-wise, there's nothing to it. It's just a gigantic bat. No file, no interesting quirk. It's just a piece of shit. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Next up, we have the U8, AKA Spider Tower. If we're talking about overall mass and strength, the U8 definitely belongs on this list. This is a mega B.O.W. Developed by none other than the wonderful minds over at Tricell. The U8 is so powerful and so destructive, it's a ticking time bomb within a building. I know this is about power and strength and hardness, but that menacing look that this thing gives when you come face to face. Chris Redfield becomes the beta. His Chad license has been revoked. And what's more powerful than the gift of being able to birth monsters? That's right. The U8 is in labor when you find it. Disgusting. Now, of course, this thing is not to be confused with the disturbing tongue monster from Resident Evil 4, U3. This U8 actually has a meaning behind its name. The U stands for ultimate ultimate badass if you ask me next up is the plaga b aka the swallow the swallower i can't pronounce that yes the plaga b erupts out of bald salazar aficionados who aren't very smart or strong at all but the noodles themselves the plaga b have a knack for swallowing heads in one hit that's right these things are a one hit kill making them pretty powerful in my book and the Plaga B really are just one of the few enemies or BOWs in Resident Evil history that are one hit kill in any difficulty. Once you see that smoky Plaga juice substance seep out, that's a lot of S's, that's it. It's coming for you and say goodbye to Leon's pretty hair. Now, yes, it's easily killable, one camera flash and it's toast. But still, that one hit kill can end an entire run, making the noodle face pretty strong. Next up, we have the beautiful, gorgeous Marguerite Baker. But not just any Marguerite Baker, Ethan Must Die Edition Margarine, AKA Bug Pussy Elite. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with Resident Evil 7, there is a specific game type known as Ethan Must Die. Now, the entire game mode is one hit kill land. Anything that slightly touches you, you will die. It's rage inducing, it's supposed to piss you off. Believe me, I have had my share of rage. It just so happens that Marguerite Baker is the final boss in Ethan Must Die. And she is nearly unstoppable, I'm telling you. The entire area is laced with bombs. She pops out out of nowhere. And this monster can take quite a hit. It takes forever to kill this thing. Sorry, Jack, it's your wife, but still. Margarine Baker, definitely hard to kill. Next, we have the Eustonac, AKA Roidman 3 million. Now the nickname actually isn't far from what happened to this abomination, this slab of muscle. The Eustonac's backstory, this thing was not only once human, it was a very frail human. Very unhappy with his physique, he voluntarily went into Neo Umbrella. They cooked them up a batch of steroids with virus 
stuff in it, and he became what we're looking at right now. And the Eustonac, or the human he formerly was, took it as a point of pride that 322 candidates did not survive the treatment that he was given to become a gigantic roid hemorrhoid. Perfect. Now on paper, we're talking about power. Visually, the Eustonac is very powerful. Easily breaks through any concrete, falls from unimaginable heights into buildings, searching for the heroes. And the utter strength and speed that the Eustonac possesses. You don't want to be anywhere near this thing. I mean, this thing topples over entire pillars. Next up, we have Albert Wesker, aka Complete global saturation. I fully understand that Albert Wesker technically isn't a B.O.W. He's more of a byproduct of a lot of things. The guy that wears sunglasses indoors and has an extremely vague accent. Do as you wish. I will follow my initial plan and lure the stars members into the mansion. But Albert Wesker has survived a tyrant impalement. If you want to go even further back, as a child, he survived Project W, where he outlived copious amounts of umbrella viruses. He also killed Oswell Spencer. Not that that makes him powerful. Of course, Oswell is a tiny old man in a wheelchair, but Wesker basically killed Hitler. Love him or hate him, Albert Wesker is definitely a powerful figure within the Resident Evil series. And it's just hilarious that he wears sunglasses the entire time. And essentially, he was brought up to outlive, outlive, and keep surviving no matter what. In fact, his entire agenda or mentality towards the human race in general is that there's too many people, too many weak people, and they need to be snuffed out. Superior genes makes a superior human race. This guy was not only powerful, that's all he believed in, and eventually he was completely corrupted by it. Next up we have Derek Simmons, aka Ada's Simp. If we're talking about cataclysmic events in a gigantic large scale, this man is very powerful in the abundance of people that were killed because of him and his actions. It goes up to the millions and different countries affected, a gigantic chunk of the population dead almost exclusively because of Derek Simmons. Now he's not only a monster on the inside, he also transforms into a pretty grotesque creature. And the boss fight can be pretty difficult, especially on the harder difficulties. So he fills two categories there. And even lore-wise, Derek Simmons represents what happens when a secretive, powerful family becomes power hungry. But on top of that, takes power for himself. Derek Simmons had many puppets, not just any puppets, high value puppets, like the invisible mastermind behind a gigantic genocide. Sure, maybe he's not a powerful creature, but in terms of scale, this guy takes the cake. Well, 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 who do we have here? It's the Queen Leech, AKA, fuck this guy. Welcome back to the party, Resident Evil Zero. Welcome back. Now, the Queen Leech is the final boss fight of the game, and it also has attached one of the weirdest human forms I've probably ever seen, an opera singer with gorgeous flowing white robes. Now, why is this thing powerful? Well, it has a pretty powerful throat. Let's start there. Check out all that gurgling. I think it comes to no surprise that the reason why the Queen Leech is here Maybe not lore-wise, it's pretty substandard final boss. But again, it's those mechanics that make this thing very, very, very difficult to deal with. So for one, you have to have both partners there. Both Billy Cohen and Rebecca Chambers. So if one of them dies and the AI fucks up, you gotta start over. Then of course, there's the annoyingness of the hitboxes and the hit ratio this thing inflicts on the character. It's a constant bludgeoning. I think that the essence of what the Queen Leech is made up of, it had the potential to be powerful. Thankfully, it wasn't, because it would have been so goddamn annoying to keep dealing with these things. And hashtag powerful throat. We're down to the final two. Next up, Lisa Trevor, 
aka the Arclay Chainsaw Massacre. Where can I possibly start with this tragic bundle of lore? Lisa Trevor, I mean, she had to be strong and powerful to be able to endure what happened to her. Now, yes, I say her, and you may take a look at this picture and you'll think monster. But long ago, Lisa Trevor was an innocent, normal child. Long story short, her parents were murdered and she was experimented on heavily, mentally and physically tortured for decades, kept in the underground of the Arclay Mansion. But here's the thing about Lisa Trevor. She is genuinely immortal. This poor girl has been worked on so much. She has gained immortality. That might be the only Resident Evil monster that you can't kill in game. There is just so much T-virus juice flowing in her veins. She's unstoppable and invincible. It's a very sad story, but like I said, a monster that has gone through that much, she had to be powerful. And anyone that wears other people's faces on their face, particularly ones that look like their parents, it takes a lot of guts. Good, good on you, Lisa. Good on you. And the very final B.O.W. on this list, the Nemesis Final Stage, aka The Blob. Now anytime I get the chance to talk about this beautiful face, I will. But more specifically, I'm talking about the final, final form of the Nemesis. Now the Nemesis alone is the perfect bioweapon. He is a pursuer with rocket launchers and tentacle arms. And if it weren't for one meddling Jill Valentine, the Nemesis would have finished his job, his duty to kill all the stars. So physically imposing leather-bound meat blob becomes an even bigger physically imposing meat blob, complete with acid-spitting rockets. Now this thing definitely belongs on the list, but it's a different kind of tier. We're talking visually powerful, lore-wise powerful, and if you even try to attempt Inferno difficulty against the final nemesis stage. It's practically one hit kill. The window of opportunity to kill this thing is so tiny and you have to learn every step it takes to avoid death. And whenever you have a knack for not dying, no matter how many freaking times this thing goes down, yeah, it's pretty powerful. Bitch can't even swim. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe for more horror lore lists. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much, guys. Comment down below which BOW you think is the most powerful. Have an awesome rest of your day. And as always, stay single.